my dress I'm going to wear, Creamy. It moves like a chow chow dancer when I do my model dance. It's cha cha, girl, <laughs> not chow chow. Hey everybody, it's Legend Wings back here with my friend Kaylee, and today we're back at it again reading some more of this marvelous book known as Model Land. Land. Doesn't really have the cover on it right no, now, we, so that's sad, but... We like our hardcovers without the shells that yep. crinkle and get in the way. That and like, see, I'm the kind of person that goes to Barnes & Noble then and hunts through all of the books to find the one that has the nicest cover, the nicest, uh, like flap on it so that mm -hmm. it's not wrinkled, none of the corners are bent, and that's the one I take. And then once I get it home, I carefully take off the outer cover and then put it where no one can touch it. <laughs> yeah. So that it stays pristine. <laughs> so now that you know the kind of book readers we are, I guess we could just get right into it. Let's All right. See. So today we're starting with chapter three, and the title is Data. Or mm. da -ta. Yes. <laughs> very it, nice. It's, it's very special. It's very special, much like the rest of this book. 3434 Pepper Lane, the home of Tuki de la Creme. Ah, the de la Creme residence. A splendiferous, luxurious palazzo of a dwelling with a marble facade, grand archways and columns, wrought iron balconies, at its second floor bedrooms, and a fountain in the center of the yard, complete with a nude male statue with oh. rolling musculature. Truly glorious. <laughs> the cream of the de la, of the de la creams. We all wish that we could abide in such a grand abode. But be careful what you wish for, darling. All that glitters is sometimes gold-plated. What's that? There, in the corner, in the foundation near the koi pond and the bird bath made of bronze, the zigzagging line shaped like a witch's profile. Is that a crack? And there, next to the crack, that silvery mask crisscrossed on the stucco, that can't possibly be a duct tape. Watch your head. Did a chunk of slate just fall off the roof? Surely your smoky eyes have deceived you. Surely these patterns of fissures in the foundation are just decorative elements. The de la Cremes have nothing to hide. Or do they? Ooh. You called it. It's a backstory. I'm yes. sure it is. Yes. The good <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Tuki walked up the seven stairs that led to her front door, tripping on the crooked third step. Another piece of slate broke off from the roof and fell to the ground, nearly slicing her skull in two. Oh, oh my God, Good she muttered. Lord. <laughs> She'd have to tell her parents about how the roof almost tried to kill her. <laughs> After steadying herself, she stood with her fingers on the door handle, hesitating before she entered, wishing she didn't have to go and cross the threshold, but knowing she had nowhere else to go. This was her home. She opened the door and tripped again, first over a cardboard box that said Creamy de la Creme on the shipping label. When she shut the door, goosebumps. Isn't that supposed to be one word? Yeah, yeah, usually I see it as one word, right? Okay. Goosebumps, one word. The answer is right here. <laughs> <laughs> when she shut the door, goosebumps immediately rose on her skin, and her sweaty locks nearly turned into a coil-shaped icicles. Tuki's mother insisted that her home's thermostat be kept at almost sub-zero temperatures at all times to combat the blazing Peppertown heat. Mm. Okay, mm. okay. <laughs> That's also probably not helping the water crisis in a roundabout way. Well, you know, they don't seem to care that much. They don't. They really <laughs> don't care. Plus, she said... People looked fresher when they were cold. Tuki <laughs> then heard the banging of pipes and the whoosh of water spewing through taps. It sounded as though all the sinks, showers, and bathtubs were running simultaneously. It's gonna cause the drought, guys. Brown Spot, her mother's voice rang out, then a hollow clunk. Brown Spot, her voice called again. Ah, another Brown Spot. Clunk. <laughs> Is she like hitting the pipes with something and like knocking rust out of them? Or? 
Like, right, trying well, to find that's more That's giving her a lot smizes. of credit to do so. Yeah, I'm thinking she's looking for the smizes and she's mistaking things like brown clumps in the pipes for uh, them. Not necessarily that she's trying to fix any problems. Right, let's see. <laughs> Tukey swept into the kitchen, which looked gleaming and new if one didn't peer very closely. The unused appliances shone. The pots and pans hanging over the island had price tags on them. That's just tacky. No. <laughs> The teapot was resting on a stovetop burner, tape covering the spout. A knife still, a knife set still lived in its shrink, shrink wrapped packaging. But if one were to go around the room with a not very strong magnifying glass, it would soon become clear that duct tape, electrical tape, caulk, industrial strength, glue, and other binding agents held the walls upright. Good. Oh no. Good. 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 I'm having a panic attack right now, Mrs. Delacreme exclaimed. <laughs> Me. <laughs> Tukey's mother loomed over the kitchen counter, holding a bunch of bananas by the fingertips of one hand, examining their skins with the photographer's... Oh. Loop? Loop? <laughs> I don't know that word. <laughs> well, I thought you might. No. Darn. <laughs> no, if it's French, apparently I don't know French things. Okay. <laughs> Her other arm held Bellissima, a lifelike baby doll dressed in a multi-layered oh, butter God. yellow dress with lace trim, complete with a pacifier in her mouth. Bellissima was Mrs. De La Creme's favorite doll from her extensive collection. Mm, I thought this banana was spotless, but it has one tiny brown speck. Oh, Yuck! She tossed the banana into the trash. Oh, so that's what she was doing. Okay. Uh, I would have never guessed that. Nope. Nope. <laughs> Today, Mrs. Delacreme, or Creamy, as she insisted everyone no, call her, including no. her children, no, no, wore a no. perfectly tailored <laughs> white one-piece pantsuit with dramatically pointed shoulder pads and a cinch belt to accentuate her small waist. A badge hanging around her neck said, Regional Manager, followed by the logo for Perfecta Fecta, the beauty department store for which she worked. It was a very good job for a metopian, a million, a million steps above working in a factory. She pulled her hair into a trejolé twist that was so severe it stretched the skin around her forehead and eyes, making her look startled. And though her body was soft, lineless, tan-skinned hands were remarkably well-preserved, her face was a different story. Thick makeup clumped heavily in permanent lines on and around her mouth. That was, the sentence just flows really weird. Yeah. And though her body and, oh, that's why. Sorry. I just read it wrong. Okay. So it's supposed to be. And though her body and soft, lineless, tan skin hands were remarkably well preserved, her face was a different story. Ah. Uh, uh, I just can't read. Don't mind me, guys. My bad. <laughs> <clears throat> Thick makeup clumped heavily in permanent lines on and around her mouth. Deep crow's feet fanned out from the corners of her eyes all the way to her ears. Even her nose was covered in wrinkles. Oh no. Tukey hoped that whatever her mother's affliction was wasn't hereditary. And this one? Too yellow, Mrs. Delacreme went on. I need green ones only. Her gaze fluttered to Tukey. For a moment, she looked at through her daughter the same way everyone at school did. Then she blinked, bringing Tukey into focus. Ah, hello, dear. You haven't been picking bananas out of the garbage bin and putting them back onto the counter, have you? Tukey blinked, her mind struggling to shift directions. Um, n n n no. <laughs> well, someone has. Then Mrs. De La Creme thrust a small jar of pickles at Tukey. Can those baby fingers of yours dig out a, a gherkin for me? I'm starving. <laughs> Tukey wiggled her small, slim fingers. Her mother was always talking about how delicate and dexterous they were, perfect for sewing small stitches or digging items out of tight jars. Tukey eyed the lush fruit in the waste bin. Bananas weren't the only items in the trash pile. There were mouthwatering grapes, two perfectly ripe avocados, and three tomatoes whose skins had just turned from green to red. What are you doing, lady? They're all very wasteful in Metopia. I apparently just this family, because the rest of the families are digging through the trash looking for their next meal. So, good. Zizi's family probably loves the day of the crap. They probably <laughs> hang out right 
back behind the house waiting for the next banana that's, that's not mean, really that sad it that's is very, very sad. unfortunate mm-hmm. don't waste guys no waste then Tuki moved over to turn off the sink faucet, which was indeed grush- uh, gushing brownish water. Mm. Don't you dare, Mrs. Delacream screamed, and Tuki froze. I'm keeping all the taps open until tea time. Water must flow continuously mm. into this house, and when our smize comes, we must catch it. Tuki stepped away from the faucet. Every year, on the eve of Tida, the world's reservoir- <laughs> reservoirs ran dry because everyone kept their taps open, <laughs> looking for a smize. You know, this se- this is seeming like a, a, a worse and worse idea about these smizes the more we read it's about just, them. And I feel like Tyra's trying to be symbolic here, and I know she's trying to relate it to the real modeling world and how different problems arise from that. This just makes me so upset. It's <laughs> like you, you'd have so many more people dying in crisis mode, and this is not good. No. <laughs> well, it is like a uh, dystopian world with different set of rules, but I guess so. That's, yes, very sad. Not a lot of rational people either, which I guess is a dystopian world. <laughs> the television was on behind them, and a reporter, coincidentally, was reporting on the hidden smizes. Now four smizes have been found, the man said excitedly. A gang of hooligan females spotted the device floating in a condemned swimming pool in pitter-patter today. Mm. They rushed the barbed wire fence and dove into the murky, stagnant, unfit-for-human-contact water. An (laughs) underwater riot broke out, severely injuring three girls. One is in critical condition at Shivera Hospital. The screen showed the girl who battled for the smize and won. She was covered in pond scum and had a mix of black muck and blood all over her face and body, but she held a glittering gold glasses-shaped object over her head and whooped with glee. I just love how so much of that was somebody actually saying those words and not actually Tyra talking as, like, a narrator. Well, no, like, it shows... Oh, you mean yeah, how like, he describes how what happens? He's literally, like, into the murky, stagnant, unfit-for-human contact water. Seems like something... Tyra would say specifically in her like Like as if it was like as if it had showed the picture of what happened on the TV and like took you and saw it. Because I can't imagine a human being other than Tyra speaking like that. I don't know. I don't know. Let's see. Huh, Mrs. Delacream said, folding her arms across her chest. That disgusting creature does not deserve a smize. Not like the miracle does. Oh, God. Yep. Oh, I bet I bet her mom's going to uh, love the outcome of this book. Good. Yep. Then the news shifted to a different story. There is still no word on what has happened to the world's most famous intoxabella, C. Tilda L. <laughs> What's it supposed to be? Uh, C.L.? I think it's supposed to be CL, but it's C till the L. <laughs> CL, the anchor said. The official word is that she's gone on hiatus, but rumors have surfaced that something darker has happened to her. Abduction, an airborne terminal illness, a mental breakdown. Keep in mind, this is a woman who has been very forthcoming about how her childhood was spent in a place without a single mirror. One can only assume how that might psychologically impact a person as they reach adulthood. But let's pray that our formidable triple T is soon on the mend. Mrs. Delacream glowered at the picture of the effervescent and CL that had popped up on the screen. Ugh, she said, wrinkling her nose. Let's pray that she stays missing forever. Well. <laughs> Mrs. Delacream suddenly started to applaud and Tookie's stomach dropped. She knew what was to follow. Sure enough, Miracle spun into the house, <laughs> followed by her best friend, Brian. Miracle and Brian bobbed in unison to music only the two of them could hear. They jumped and spread their feet out, arched their heads back, rolled up th- rolled up through their torsos, and pointed at Tookie and Mrs. Delacreme. Every <laughs> limb on Miracle's body, every joint, moved gracefully and fluidly and with the utmost confidence. It was impossible for anyone, even Tookie, to take their eyes off of her. Even though she was 13 and Tookie was 15, she was more womanly than Tuki in every way. She'd even developed faster, getting her period earlier that year. Tuki still hadn't gotten hers yet, 
Oh, oh such okay. useful information yeah, that I, I did not need to know. Did, puberty was fine. We didn't we understand what that generally means. Yep. We didn't need to specify for a young adult book, but I don't know. With a couple more hip rolls and knee dips, Miracle and Brian slid to the floor with their arms spread out as Miracle exclaimed, Dota! <laughs> and hence we have our chapter title. <laughs> yep. Called it. <laughs> Mrs. Delacream applauded tepidly. Miracle, baby, it's not da-ta, it's ta-da. And what have I told you? Every hallway is a runway, not a dance hall. What you need to be doing is practicing your walk. But I love dancing, Miracle pouted. Yes, honey, I know. But you don't love it better than becoming an intoxibella, do you? Mrs. De La Cream shrieked. Oops, I should have shrieked that, but that's okay. Oh, man. Miracle looked torn, like she didn't know how to answer. I think dance will help Miracle on t Dodd. Brian wrapped his arm around Miracle's shoulder. His voice was both feathery and sharp. Right, doofus? How is it both feathery and sharp? Feathery? How could we... Feathery is like light and sharp. How can you be feathery and sharp? I think I dance will help Miracle on T-Dod. I, I don't know. I, I, I can't I feel like those are opposite. hear this in my mind. It's feathery. Maybe he just like kind of rolls between the two. And so he's feathery on some notes and he's sharp on some other ones. I don't know. I don't quite know. But all I can think of right now is Magic Brian from Adventure Zone. Hello, hello. Welcome to my cave. He seems nice. It's true, creamy, Miracle whined, not noticing Brian's <laughs> insult. She usually didn't. Wait, so who's he calling doofus? The Apparently mom or miracle. miracle? Apparently Miracle. Miracle. Oh, no. No. Well, she didn't notice. I mean, maybe Still it's like. good. I mean, it's probably just like being like, oh, come oh, on, you, you dummy. dummy. <laughs> yeah. Kind of like nudge, nudge. I, just, I hope. I don't know. I don't know. The whole Miracle Brian dynamic is really interesting, especially the names. We got Miracle and Brian, Brian. has the most normal name out of everyone, I think. Good Thank for you, him. Brian. Thank you. <laughs> it's true, creamy Miracle whined, not noticing Brian's insult. She usually didn't. What I have to do first to prepare is to get my dancing to perfectness ness. That way I can pose the best. That way I can pose the best of the rest in a vest and pass the test and be the guest and walk with zest unless they want me to walk from the east to the west. And she launched into a tap number. Oh no. Okay, I can read this. I know I can. <laughs> What I have to do first to prepare is to get my dancing to perfectness -ness. That way I can pose the best of the rest in a vest and pass the test and be the guest and walk with zest unless they want me to walk from the east to the west. And she launched into a tap number. Stop it, <laughs> Mrs. Delacroix yelled. <laughs> Oh, so no. my baby girl wants to be a professional dancer like her daddy, boomed a voice from the door. I thought your routine was fantastic. In the doorway stood Mr. De La Creme. He was much younger than Tukey's mother. Oh. A stained black unitard cut deeply into his flesh. His once powerful muscles sagged. He swept across the room, scooped Miracle up, and spun her around. He closed his left eye, which was made of glass, an unfortunate what? souvenir of an acrobatic performance gone awry oh. many years ago when he was the incredible Chris Cret... Chris Cream Combat and not just Christopher Taylor Creme. All right. Oh, these sentences are a mouthful, guys. Oh, I can't wait to type them out later. <laughs> <laughs> the incredible Chris Creme Crobat. No, it is Crobat. Like the There's Pokemon? That's what I was picturing, but it's probably like it's, Acrobat. He, he's like Crobat <laughs> with a leotard. And now I get to edit that in. Thanks, me. <laughs> Are you excited, Pumpkin? Mr. Delacream asked Miracle, sweeping past Tookie like he didn't even see her. Usually he didn't. Miracle lowered her eyes. I guess, but I'm frightening too. <laughs> scared, Brian snorted. Honestly, I didn't know your little old brain could be scared. And anyway, girl, they're gonna choose you for sure. 
My baby girl, finally walking in the day of discovery, Mrs. Della Cream wiped an imaginary tear from her eye. Indeed, now 13 years old, Miracle was finally participating in the grand event. There wasn't an official minimum age for who could compete during TDAD, but no one younger than 13 had ever been chosen. Then Mr. Della Cream pulled a chair out of the kitchen island. Sit down, Miracle baby, rest your feet. Oh, Christopher, will you stop smothering her, Mrs. Delacream said brusquely. Then she leaned down and brushed a stray hair from Miracle's forehead. My, my, we need to get you to the salon so Perry can do something with those atrocious split ends. Mr. Delacream shot his wife an icy glare. Woman, how stupid do you think I am? You just want her to, <laughs> you just want to get her to that damn salon so you can do it. Whatever you do with Perry while Miracle is under the dryer. What? I see how you look at him. <gasps> what? Oh, no. Scandal. Oh. Scandal so soon. It's a scandal. It's, it's an outrage. outrage. <laughs> oh. Mrs. Delacreme thrust her nose into the air. How dare you insult me and accuse me of such filth. And who are you, Mr. One-Eyed Ex-Circus Star, who spends his nights boozing? Oh, oh, thanks for just oh man telling and not showing. This is fine. Well, I mean, like it kind of like alludes to it looks fine on the outside, but then once you look just Keep a little bit like, closer, we could have done things like she noticed bottles strewn about, or she like watched her as her mom reapplied her makeup when dad left, or something along those lines, and not necessarily okay. like yeah. you're having an affair. Well, you're a drinker, so. So it's the fighting element, but yeah, yeah, there are other ways yeah. you could have done it. Yeah. It's not the worst. It's not the worst. I don't think it's all but that bad. But it just bad. like hit me like a semi truck, <laughs> and I don't know how to feel now. <laughs> they hit us and they hit us hard. Uh, oh, 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 it continues. <laughs> oh, good. So after uh, he spends his nights boozing, Mr. Delacreme roared back, At least I don't cheat on your old. Stop it, Miracle whined, and both parents froze. Back to me, everyone. I'm the most important girl in the room. Member? Member? Her voice and face were so adorable that the tension was momentarily forgotten. Well, like she serves Oh, a so maybe it was supposed to be more like, Stop it, Miracle whined, and both parents froze. Back to me, everyone. I'm the most important girl in the room. Member? Her voice and face were so adorable that the tension was momentarily forgotten. Tukey popped another baby ger gherkin into her mouth, feeling as irrelevant as the bananas in the trash can. She spied the Peppertown press and picked it up, a welcome distraction from being invisible in her own home. Give me that, Tukey, her mother said, snatching it from her hands. I haven't read the paper yet, and you know I cannot stand touching it after anyone else has had their dirty hands mm. on it. She thumbed through the pages. Ha! The police are moving in closer on that fugitive baroness. Oh, she does show up again. Okay, good. One she, time. <laughs> yep. She read the article aloud. Authorities believe the Baroness may have fled to Terra Bossa Nova. Terra Bithia. They <laughs> no, it's Terra Bossa Nova. Terra Bithia. <laughs> <laughs> Although they have no firm proof. <laughs> they are working with Bossa Novian. Bosonovian local authorities to track down this evildoer who has ruined the lives of tens of thousands and scarred the image of the annual Intoxistakes oh, event. Like, intoxicating, but Intoxistakes. Intoxistakes, <laughs> Intoxistakes event. Oh. In which second year students travel to strip town and gamblers bet on which girls will become Intoxabellas upon graduation. Oh no! So but the moral of the story, kids, is you, you strip you in. So do that, I guess. Oh, no. <laughs> well. Uh, oh, man. Okay. Oh, no. All right. These are your role models. I mean, like, although, like, modeling will do stuff like that, will you have, like, sexy photo shoots or other stuff like that? But, Maybe not quite on that level. But, like. But mm. still. Oh dear, That's that just, just very... kind of surprised me. Yeah. Yep. Wait, so Tukey's only like 15, and the youngest girl that's ever been picked was 13. So that's a 14-year-old that's stripping for like creepy old gamblers. Could be, yeah. 
or, or young gamblers, but still, stripping for people. No, no, guys, no. No, 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 no. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Please, no. Oh, no. All right, so. <laughs> she looked up. I hope they find that shady wench. We lost most of our savings trusting her. Ah. Then she flipped to the next page. Oh, look, there's a sale on tea kettles at... Woman, Mr. Delacream said through clenched teeth, you still have a brand new unused kettle on the stove, and you don't even drink tea because you say the leaves are dried up and stale. Yeah, that's, that's pretty <laughs> sure. That's what tea leaves are. Mrs. Delacream stared at him. Tukey, make me some tea. <laughs> wow. <gasps> Tukey flinched. But, 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 Creamy, you, you d don't like, d d duh, Mrs. Delacream imitated nastily. Spit it out. Tukey glanced at the floor. For as long as she could remember, the sight and sound of her mother had caused her heart to flutter, her palms to sweat, and her tongue to stammer. Mrs. Delacream dragged Tukey to every speech pathologist in Ladorno, but the mother-specific stammer could not be cured. Mrs. Delacream rolled her eyes, exasperated. What did I say, Tookie? Make me some tea now. I like her. She's the I best. love love what all a of loving these mother. characters. All of these characters are oh, 100% man. redeemable. Just Poor you Tukey. wait. Poor Tuki. Tuki's going to win it all and then her parents are going to love her and she's like going to be like, "Yay, now they love me and everything's good." I hope that's not what happens. I hope that's not I either. hope that she's like, "You know what? You guys just awful. That we'll never find out because this Hi. is supposed to be a multi-part series and I'm pretty sure there's only one book, so. Tukey shrugged and took the tape off the tea kettle spout. She placed it under the gushing tap, filled it, and placed it on the stove. Suddenly, a tiny yellowish bubble spewed out of the running faucet. Oh. This wasn't unusual. Off-color water was a common sight in the Delacrim household because of the home's broken water filters. Tuki scampered to the cabinet, snatched a mug, and dropped a bag of mint tea into it. Moments later, she ran back to the boiling kettle and relieved it of its howling. She poured the, sc the scalding water over the bag and handed the brew to her mother, who scowled at the cup. Mrs. De La Creme defiantly looked over to her husband, then brought the cup to her nose. <laughs> Smelling is not enough creamy, Mr. De La Creme taunted. Drink it. <laughs> Tuki turned back to the tap. The small yellow bubble began to expand, filling mm. half of the kitchen sink. Oh. Then it changed color. From spicy red to soothing blue to emerald green and finally to a plethora of yellows. It was strangely beautiful. Mm. Tuki carefully picked up the bubble with her hands and then, before her eyes, the bubble flattened itself and transformed into a cellophane-thin Golden cat's eye sunglasses without the frames. Oh, okay. Oh! Miracle screamed, staring at Tukey. Look! Mrs. Delacram noticed it too, dropped the teacup from her hand. It crashed to the floor. Is it? Could it be? Our ship has come in, Mr. Delacram exclaimed. Tukey looked from her sister, Miracle, to the true miracle that had taken shape in her hands. A smize. Wow, I never saw something like that ever coming in this Total story. Total shock. Total never. shocker, guys. I just, part of me almost wanted her to do, like, look down into a puddle and find it somewhere where, like, people had scavenged over. Like, it would have been, like, just so poetic if, like, like you said, she looked down to, into a puddle that no one had noticed and it's just, like, left and forgotten. Kind of like she is. Yep. And then found it that way. Yep, all oh, this bubble is a thing. Like, that would have been nice. But no, I guess we're just going to keep using up all the water, and it's fine. My cat's going to help here in a minute, guys. There she She's is. She's a good helper. Good girl, Tyga. Hi, babe. All right, 91% chance. Tukey's body tingled. She was holding a smize in her hands. Her, a forget-a-girl. The smize was made up of ornate eyeshadow-like flourishes and strokes of taxicab Dijon, Baby Chic, Banana, and Lemonade Yellow. Yeah. 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 Color, that same colors from the... Yeah. 
Thinner than a sheet of paper, it was surprisingly heavy and seemed to hum ever so slightly as it rested in Tuki's palms. Wait, is it a piece of paper or are it, or is it the glasses? Or is it glass? Both? They're glasses. But they're just piece of paper glasses. But I feel like the strokes are like pieces of paper on it. Ah, but she's saying it'll okay. be super light because it's thinner than a sheet of paper. So it's probably like gold or something. Or something. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Good cat. Mrs. De La Creme stalked up to Tukey. Mr. De La Creme was in perfect step behind his wife. Brian shoved Miracle forward and joined the Smize Parade heading in Tukey's direction. Slowly, Tukey, dear, Mrs. De La Creme advised. Hand it over. Uh-oh. <laughs> Didn't see that coming either. Uh-oh. <laughs> Tukey hesitated, then stretched out her arms, feeling a little sad to part with the beautiful membrane. I don't like that word either. <laughs> no. Hmm. Beautiful. Just say glasses. Because that's what they are. Paper. Something. Membrane must have another definition to it that... Tyra right well, clicked. No, it's like source. a very thin membrane. So like that's probably what really? how she's trying to like say it's so thin, mm, but that makes me uncomfortable like it's alive kind of a thing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that. Her arm... I just think it's weird. <laughs> it's really weird. Her arms wobbled. Careful, Mr. De La Creme roared. Oh roared. Careful, Mr. De La Creme <laughs> roared. Don't want those scraggy twigs of yours dropping our future. Tukey's mother's breath quickened, and her wrinkled face started to turn blue. Mr. De La Crumb patted his wife's arm. Calm down, Creamy. Everything's going to be okay. <laughs> Excuse me, Mrs. De La Crumb shot him a look. I cannot believe your flabby couch potato ass had the audacity to tell my hardworking firm one that... Everything will be okay. Wait, hang on a second. What? I cannot believe your flabby coach, your flabby couch potato ass, has the audacity to tell my hardworking firm one that oh. everything will be okay. <laughs> Don't let your ass tell my ass what to do. <laughs> Is that? You talk when you're fighting. That's not you how I don't. I don't think I would. I think if I was going to yell at someone and was so angry, it, it would come out a little bit quicker and snappier than that long, yeah, long ass sentence. <laughs> well, what's really throwing me off is that Tyra cursed. <laughs> well, I mean, like the dad said a couple bad words earlier. Yeah, but like, oh man. I, was, I mean, it is like a YA novel, not a kid's y novel. That so. is true. At least it's only that. We'll see. It might branch out into I, other things at this point. Who knows? <laughs> it just caught me off guard for a second. I'm like, oh, okay, I guess we are swearing in these videos then. Cool. Yep. Let's do it. <laughs> I mean, you could just like bleep stuff just out. Just bleep stuff out <laughs> randomly. Replace it with other words. Really random other words. Banana. Tush. Tush. Wait, what's the tooch? The, uh... Tooch, booty tooch. Yeah! Booty tooch. Not tooching? Tooching. Yes. Maybe every time we see ass, we just say booty tooch instead. <laughs> yep. Yep. Oh, dear. I think it would be great. <laughs> it would be marvelous, I'm sure. Mrs. De La Creme plays Bellis... Bellissima on the kitchen counter and scoop both hands into Tukey's palms. As the smite, yeah. Mrs. De La Creme placed Bellissima, Bellissima? Mrs. De La Creme placed Bellissima on the kitchen counter and scooped both hands into into Tukey's palms. What? So if you got your paw, I just. Oh, do so she's that. just scooping stuff up. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. I think. No, that makes sense. That yeah. makes sense. It just took a while to. Envision that. Yeah. <laughs> As the smize was being pulled away from her, Tuki felt a pang. Her moment of being special in some way had vanished as quickly as it had arrived. Mrs. De La Creme brought the smize under an overhead light. Brian, Mr. De La Creme, and Miracle gathered around and stared. 
Tukey had to stand on a chair to get a partial view of it. Soon the smize began to shake. Waves of yellow of every shade popped out from all sides. A miniature flag emblazoned with a smize then deployed from the middle of the object. Fluttering in its own mild breeze, words began to scroll through the air. Mrs. Delacrom began to read in a clear, haughty voice, Congratulations, De La Cremes! De La Cremes, can it see us? Mr. De La Creme wondered worriedly. He began to flit around the room, removing duct tape from various holes and cracks and tightening as much as he could. We can't let them see the place like this. We gotta clean the house now! Now, now, people! I want this place looking like Disney on ice in one minute. Mrs. De La Creme sucked her teeth and shook her head at her husband before continuing to read the words that floated in the air. You hold in your tea-drenched hands the seventh and last day of Discovery Smize. What girls everywhere dream of having. The wearer of this smize has a 91% chance of being discovered on the day of discovery. Tyra's eye is watching, guys. <laughs> Tyra's eye is watching. 91% chance? Ha! Huh, Mr. De La Creme boasted. My miracle will be batting a thousand. He hobbled around, throwing out the tea bag, crumpling the newspaper, and crawling on his knees to glue the broken granite tiles back together. Harry, if you haven't made your bed, throw it away. It's too late to make it now. Company is coming. Get rid of the couches. We can't let people know we sit. If you don't stop, Mrs. De La Creme said, glaring at him, I'm going to poke out your other eye. Which, we are elated to inform you, improves the De La Creme's offspring's chances of fame and fortune. Perhaps you'd be able to rid yourselves of this ramshackle asylum should your spawn reach the pinnacle of success. Wait, who said that? The I'm, smice? I think the smice said that. The they called their kids the, the spawn? spawn? Ramshackle asylum should your spawn reach the pinnacle of success. That just will always, I think, have the connotation of, like, devil spawn. Devil spawn. Evil children. <laughs> At least one of them is, it appears. The other one? No, she's just dumb. She's just, uh, <laughs> We'll see. She's just been pampered and she's dumb. This is true. <laughs> We're going to be rich, Brian yelled. We, <gasps> Mrs. De La Creme. Did I get it? <laughs> you did it. Mrs. De La Creme eyed him suspiciously. Then she continued, Might I bring your attention to the myriad of golden colors on the smize? When choosing your attire for the day of discovery, pay close attention so that your ensemble complements and does not clash with this precious smize specimen. Many of the left behind 9% of smize holders during previous days of discovery deviated from dashing dress design decisions. Decisions, you have been warned. Creamy, creamy, I had the perfect dress, Miracle yelped. Mrs. De La Creme read the last of the air message. May your clothes click, your hair shimmer, your face glimmer, and your stride glide. Bon chance, De La Cremes, and maybe, just maybe, we'll see you in Model Land. A siren blared. And fine print with no spaces between words scrolled almost faster than Mrs. De La Creme could read. Now for the rules. The wearer of the smize must only wear it in the day of Discovery Square. It must only be worn by a female. Do not inform others that you possess a smize. Although the smize comes from the water, do not get it wet. Violation of these rules <laughs> We cause serious side effects. Basic nausea, vomiting, blurry vision, vision of fashion police brutality. <laughs> Designer knockoffs, knocking you upside the head, stinging bees in your hair bonnet, fighting wolves in cheap clothing. <laughs> fighting wolves in cheap clothing. <laughs> the words disappeared. The colored ribbons and the flag retreated. Wait, did it actually show it all in one? Okay, so it there was are... two. It was two paragraphs, so that helped me out a little bit. But that like, was very kind of them. <laughs> it was a lot of fun, let me say. Oh, the words disappear. Fashion police brutality. <laughs> Fashion police brutality. Designer knockoffs knocking you upside the head. Stinging bees in your hair bonnet. Biting wolves in cheap clothing. <laughs> I love it. 
It's so dumb. This I is love. my favorite part. <laughs> It's so punny. It's so horrible. I love it. But that's like a fun oh, funny. It was This good. is much more fun than the stupid like this miracles like fun. rhymes. I hope this is the rest of our book right here is just me rattling off like an auctioneer all these random statements. It would make me so happy. <sighs> the words disappeared. The colored ribbons and the flag retreated and the smiles let out what sounded like a contented sigh. Tuki turned and stared at Miracle, whose cheeks were pink with pleasure. So what was really happening? Miracle was really going to walk on the day of discovery, that mysterious, elusive, galvanizing event that had driven everyone into frenzied mania. Tuki knew that she shouldn't be surprised. Her parents had talked of little else all year. On the chalkboard in the corner of the kitchen was a training schedule, listing the times and dates for Miracle's walking, posing, facial expression, pouting, and phonics classes. I call it your life plan. Life plan? <laughs> life plan. Trophies from Miracle's dance competition victories crowded the mantle in the den. Eight crowns hung from the hooks on the wall in Miracle and Tuki's shared bedroom, each saying the mover of Metopia and glittery letters across the front. Miracle had won the mover of Metopia contest every year she competed, and it, it had become so predictable that few of Metopia even bothered entering anymore. So she just wins that's, by default. That's a self-fulfilling <laughs> prophecy right there if I ever saw one. <laughs> but still... Tuki felt like this moment had snuck up on her. With the Smize's help, Miracle was almost sure to go to Model Land, that misty, spooky, mysterious place atop the mountain. What actually happened there? So listen up. On the day of discovery, we'll take Miracle to the city square very, very early in the morning to get her ready, Mrs. De La Creme was saying to the group. She started counting things off on her fingers. It will be me, your father, Tuki, m me? Tuki interrupted, so startled that she straightened to her full six feet. Wh why do you need me? Dang, she's tall. She's very tall, child. <laughs> For 15. Didn't it say just a minute ago that she couldn't, like, even see over their shoulders? Yeah, like she had to stand up on something. So they all must be really tall, too, I'm guessing. I guess. Maybe. Yeah, why does she have to come? Miracle wrinkled her nose, looking slightly jealous. Suddenly, a tiny flutter of hope rose in Tuki's chest. Was it possible her parents wanted her to walk, too? Mrs. De La Creme sank into one hip. Isn't it obvious? We need your baby fingers to fasten the buttons and zippers on Miracle's dress, and to get my baby gherkins out of the jar for me while she's walking. You know my gherkins call me down when I'm nervous. <laughs> yeah, I totally just carry around a jar of pickles everywhere I go. And when I get a little worried at work, I just plop one right into my mouth and I feel much better. Hey, if it helps her. <laughs> if it helps. She seems kind of crazy. She, she might need those. Little, she, I would give her all the gherkins she wanted if it kept her quiet. Oh, Tuki said quietly feeling a little ridiculous that she'd thought for a moment that they'd wanted her to walk on T-Dod. I suppose it will be funnerer if you're there, Dookie, Miracle said in a conciliatory tone. Tuki, Tuki said, feeling a barb of anger. That's what I said, Miracle protested. Yeah, right, Tuki thought. She noticed Brian snickering behind his hand. Don't laugh at me, Miracle said. Frustrated. I'm on my periodical right now. It makes me forgetful. <laughs> oh, this is so cringy. Oh, no. It's period, not periodical, Tuki growled. Miracle oh. smirked. How do you know? You even, you haven't even gotten yours yet. Why? Why, Why is, is this part of the book? Because this is what girls bitch about, apparently. No, they don't. Don't we bitch about this stuff to each other all the time? We Not don't. Like, no. We don't. We don't do that. This is weird. This is really uncomfortable. Oh, man. 
Tuki turned away, her face flooded with heat. Miracle never resisted the urge to remind her that she had gotten her period already, even though she was two years younger. Why is she? Why I, does she think this is a good thing? This is a pain. I just. I don't. Tuki yeah. doesn't know what she. How lucky she, she is. Doesn't know what she's asking for at this point. Like. Like I could go on a whole long topic about this whole ordeal, but I'm already so uncomfortable. Like I just want to move on. This is such a on. weird part of the book. I hope is this is it's gonna come up again. It's gonna be some girl talk thing later. They'll be like, "Don't worry, Tuki. I haven't gotten mine yet either." And they'll be like, "It probably is." They'll be it's bloodless sisters. Exactly. It'll be great. <laughs> What's gonna happen? It's gonna I, happen. Hundred percent. Yep. And call the other that. girl's gonna like yep, die saving Tuki or something, and it that's that's how their friendship's gonna end. It'll be great. <laughs> and as she's dying, she'll be like, Tuki, I hope you get, get your, your period. <laughs> Tuki, please get your period for me. <laughs> almost done with this chapter. <laughs> then Miracle suddenly ran out of the room, perplexing everyone. She returned moments later, swirling and twirling, wearing an elaborate flamenco-style fuchsia costume. Here's my dress I'm going to wear, Creamy. It moves like a chow-chow dancer when I do my model dance. It's cha-cha, girl, <laughs> not chow-chow, Brian stifled a snicker. <laughs> dog like bounding <laughs> oh no and it's walk not dance mrs de la creme sounded like she was going to burst a blood vessel besides the dress is hideous and has nothing to do with couture take that thing off congratulations tuki that dress is now yours great tuki thought awesome wow, wow. <laughs> another or great Tuki thought. Another that dress is revolting and will look marvelous on Tuki hand me up. Okay. It's really weird because she uses like many people italics to show inner thoughts, and then she unitalicizes to show emphasis them, but then she did like eight words in a row and I couldn't what? tell if it was supposed to be in Tuki's thought or not. Another that dress is revolting will look marvelous on Tuki hand me up. Oh, that is hard to read. It's just a little hmm. janky. Now as for the now, as for a day of discovery dress for my miracle, Mrs. De La Crown continued. Miracle, Tuki, and I are going to going to Ladorno tomorrow, and we will find a dress that is fit for fashion, not flamenco. But Miracle mind Me? Tuki said again. Mrs. De La Creme looked annoyed with both of them. My decision is final. One of you will be trying on lots of dresses, and the other will be busy picking them up. Everyone marched out of the kitchen while Miracle danced. Once after they had all dispersed, did Tuki... Okay. Only after they had all dispersed did Tuki realize she'd forgotten to tell her mother about the piece of roof slate that had nearly sliced her head open on her way in. Tuki dejectedly walked to her room, sadly realizing that the forget a girl had actually forgotten about her own forgettable self. And that's the end of chapter four. Wow, that was something. <sighs> it only gets more uncomfortable from here, I am certain. <laughs> I am certain. Oh, man. I just... Some of this brings <laughs> me so much joy because of how awkward of it, it is, and then the other parts makes me want to die a little bit inside because it like <laughs> hurts me i don't know i was never like in a circle of girls or whatever in high school or whatever time frame this is so maybe girls argue about stuff like this all the time and loft it over each other's heads i no i really don't think so though so. no 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 <laughs> not like that no 
not from my experience, but all right, it's, I mean, it's fantasy fiction land. Maybe it's like it's like a rite of passage. Instead of having your quinceanera, all you do is you you have your first period, and then you're like better than other people. I don't know. <laughs> Anyway, that's where we're going to end this episode for today. We'll do another two chapters next episode, but this I feel like is a nice little spot to stop. A little bit shorter than last time, so editing might not take us nearly as long. But Yep, hopefully not. <laughs> hopefully. We'll see how the rest of these go, though, it's trying to do two at a time. But Anyways, thanks guys for watching. Make sure you subscribe um, so you can keep updated on other Model Land episodes that we'll put up. And um, let us know in the comments below what you think so far and what are some of your thoughts on these characters and situations. That, and if they make you feel uncomfortable as well. So, <laughs> Alright guys, bye! All right, bye!